Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's Caffeine for the Soul. And today, I, I want to talk to you about how to change pretty much anything. And if you enjoy the podcast, if you enjoy the kinds of things I talk about on this podcast, I encourage you to check out our basic course in living from the inside out at michaelneal.org forward slash basic course. And it's a free introduction to the, the kind of understanding at the heart of everything I talk about in these podcasts. And, and as I said, today, I want to talk about change. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you an example, and then I'm going to show you how you can apply that example to pretty much anything. And, and the example I wanted to share is how I learned to be a better listener. Now, I am a professional coach and, and teacher and have been for, for, I'm in my fourth decade of it. And so you'd think I'd be a good listener. But about seven years ago, I, I did a, a a uh, program on listening with with my mentor Mavis Karn, and I realized to my kind of horror that I was kind of a terrible listener. That I was very good at responding well, but I, I wasn't really good at listening. And it wasn't it wasn't that I talked too much. It just was that I was listening to myself and not really listening to the client. Now, part of me was also excited about this because I realized, wow, if I've done this well as a, as a, a coach and teacher, as a bad listener, I bet I'll do even better and be more impactful as I learn to listen better. But what actually happened, the way it actually changed for me was not will and it was not practice. It was something much simpler but subtler. So what we did in the program is we, we played with different ways of listening. And so we, we, we would listen to one another in a distracted state of mind. And we, we would listen to one another with the intent of fixing whatever was wrong. And we would listen to one another uh, to, in, in a way that kind of showed that we were really listening, that demonstrated that we were listening. And then in the end, we would just listen. We'd listen as if we were uh, listening to a piece of music. We'd listen as if we were a, 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 a video camera. We'd just listen. And it was such a different experience to the other types of listening. And, and that in and of itself was really helpful to see. But what happened next was the, the game changer. She, she asked us to, to take a piece of paper and draw a line vertically down the middle. And on the left-hand side, she asked us to, to, to jot down, like, how, how does it feel when you're really being listened to? And we shared the feelings that came with that. And, and, and also, what, what kind of does it do for us? What does it allow us to do? What does it encourage us to do when we're feeling really listened to? And we made note of that. And then on the other side, went, okay, well, what does it feel like when you're not being listened to? And then what does it feel like? What, what does it kind of encourage you to do or make you do when you really feel not listened to? And there was something about actually writing it down on a piece of paper for myself and seeing them side by side that it was just obvious to me that I didn't ever want to not listen to somebody if I was listening to them. I never wanted to play a role in them having the experience on the right side of the paper as opposed to the left side of the paper. So I decided I want to be a great listener. And the next question that was there for all of us is, okay, if, if it's clear to us that we really want to be, in this case, great listeners, but this is ultimately going to be about how you change pretty much anything, how do we do it? And, and Mavis gave us the simplest, most beautiful piece of advice I think I've ever heard. She said, all you need to do to change it once you're clear about what you want is notice when you're not and stop. And to this day, when I'm with a client, when I'm with my wife, when I'm with my kids, when I'm with strangers, 
The second I notice I'm not really listening, that I'm distracted, I'm in my head, I'm trying to help, I stop. And there I am. And listening is now just the default. And occasionally I get caught up and miss it, and then I'm back. Now, how do you use this to change pretty much anything? Well, think of something that you've been thinking you want to change. Like a lot of people would like to worry less. Well, okay, so how would you do it? Well, draw a line, vertical line, down a piece of paper on the left-hand side. Jot down, what, what does it feel like when you don't worry? When you're not worried, what are the feelings that are there for you? What, what do you tend to do? How do you tend to behave when you're not worried? How are you in relationship to others when you're not worried? And then on the right-hand side, you would jot down, okay, well, how do you feel when you worry? And I know worried is going to be one of your answers, but there's probably other feelings too. And what are the things you tend to do when you're worried? And how are you with other people when you're worried? And look at it side by side and, and see, is it clear for you? I don't want to do this anymore. And if it is, then decide not to do it anymore. And if it's not, then don't worry about it because it's, you're not going to be able to change it because you're not really sure you, you, you want to. But if it is clear, then all you have to do is notice when you're worrying and stop. Now, I know from experience that I say things like that and people go, well, easier for you to say. No, no, it's actually really not that hard to do if you really don't value worrying anymore. But it's almost impossible to stop worrying if you think worrying is good for you. If you think worrying is going to help keep you safe or stop you from doing bad things or help you plan or prepare or be on your game, then no, you're not going to be able to just stop worrying. But how hard is it for you to not drink rat poison if somebody shows you that it's rat poison? I'm going to guess it's not hard at all. And if you notice that you're drinking rat poison, you'll probably stop immediately. Like I notice with interest, nobody has ever hired me to, to help them stop poking themselves in the eye with a pen. And that's because people kind of know that they don't want to poke themselves in the eye with a pen. And if they notice themselves poking themselves in the eye with a pen, they would stop. And it is the same with pretty much anything. Step one, just get really clear that you do want to change. And not like, yeah, I want to change. No, check. Like, is there any counter argument for you? Is there anything in you that's like, well, I want to change a bit. I mean, I'd like to worry less. I mean, I'd like to listen a little better, but sometimes I'd like to not. And, and, and if it's not something that's clear, don't waste your time trying to change it because it's going to be hard work and it's only going to work when you're working hard at it. But if it is clear to you, then all you need to know is is to notice when you're doing it and stop. Have fun, learn heaps, happy exploring, and I'll talk with you soon. 